in this video i'm going to tell you about wernicke's area in detail and in this video it will also include the types of aphasia got it okay let's discuss wernicke's area because this area number has not been clearly given some say it's 30 9, some say it is 40, some say it is 22, right? You might even find some saying it as 21. So, let us discuss, discuss about Wernicke's area. So, as I told you, area number 2 is audio psychic area. You learn in for this is, you know, all at least the another word for this area is, you know, uh, sensory speech area or language learning area, right? So, out of this, you all learn things because of your experiences from the world outside. So, from auditory stimulus, what you learn from auditory stimulus is saved here in 22. What you learn from visual stimulus, that is visual psychic area, that is stored here, right? Area number 39, as I told you, like you have a lot of memories uh, in your mind, saved in your mind, people even who are not alive. If you see somebody on the screen, on the TV, you will say, oh, this, this person is mimicking that, that of my friend, that of my relative. You have that memories or you can even identify a celebrity on a magazine without a name because it is all saved in your memory, right? Even like, you know, primary schools, they show you an apple and they ask you, okay, tell me which, which fruit is this in primary kids. So, that means visual stimulus is like giving you a stored memory from a long life, a long past experiences. You get to know everything. But if this visual psychic image damage, you cannot appreciate what you are seeing. You cannot interpret what you are seeing. Got it? You may not even to identify the shape. You cannot, you may, you are seeing a, a cube, but you are not able to say that it is a cube because your, your sense of memory has lost regarding the identification of the objects from visual stimulus. Got it? So, that is visual psychic area. And if area 40, area 40 is related to, you know, let us write it down. This is audio psychic area and this is visual visual psychic area hold on this is visual psychic area and this area 40 you remember this is pre marginal gyrus this was angular gyrus so had area number 40 which is in the angular gyrus, here it is like you know what is taught it is learning, learning, learning what type of learning without auditory or without visual aids like mathematics, calculation, calculation without auditory, without stimulus, like, you know, some, of course, mathematics you may do with the help of visual stimulus also, seeing on the screen, you may uh, calculate by hearing also, but leaving away 39 and 42, now think about a person is uh, adding something without, you know, sitting alone, imagining and calculating, right? You can calculate some of your calculations without auditory and visual closed eyes, without anybody talking, you can calculate, right? So, that is like calculative memory is also stored here, mathematics is also stored here and, uh, you know, this uh, ability to express from your mind, 
from your ex, you know is you know uh, memory like if you are asked to come up on a screen and like you know on on a debate and a, or you know you can say like um, an extempore speech suddenly you are asked to come on this uh, stage and say a few words about some some special topic so now no auditory stimulus has been given to you regarding the direct question there is no visual command now you have to speak upon a topic now what you are speaking is just from your right from area number 40 right what are you thinking what you are you know about the topic that you are speaking is from area number 40 so ultimately all this together like and yet tell me that some authors have included area number 22 to 21 now remember 22 was on the superior temporal gyrus and just below to that extension of 22 onto the middle temporal gyrus you will find is area number 21. So ultimately this all is a part of vernix. Vernix is sort of language learning area. Language is two types you know written language and spoken language both. And all this will be connected, actually there is less of space, uh, let us draw it here, yes. so that make you understand it better, right. So this was surface and here remember the or parts triangle, uh, triangular, opercularis, parts triangularis, this area is called Broca's area. This is called Broca's area. The motor speech area. And this area here, here behind to the gyrus of Hachel, is was 22. Down below it is 21. Here it is 40. Here it is 39. So all this, this much area. And this includes all the numbers I have mentioned, right? So, numbering also, if you want, I can add up. This is 21, this is 22, this is 39, this is 40, right? So, and I have taught you about all this before also, all these areas. So, together all this, you know, together all this, you can write them as verniques. Got it? And now how are the two connected? That also is very important. These are connected with the help of association fibers, the arcuate fibers. And this mainly is superior longitudinal fasciculus. That is the arcuate fiber, association fibers. So, now, if any of this lesion happens here in Vernix, any sort of lesion, either visual psychic, either audio psychic or area number 40, that is like learning memory, mathematic calculation and your past memories. So, of all this, anywhere what happens is a problem, injury and lesion happens and subsequently with that stimulus given, you will not be able to speak the correct answer. Although Broca's is helping you to speak that this is motor speech area, this helps to, you know, you know, you know, the, uh, to bring out your accent and the, the type of vocabulary you want to use, like with the movement of the lips, the movement of the tongue, movement of the pharynx, movement of the soft palate. So, if this is working fine, this is not working. So, what will happen? You will start speaking, but what you are speaking you yourself not know and the other person will not be able to listen understand what in or you know comprehend what you are speaking and that is called jagran aphasia and it's a conductive uh, agnose you know aphasia because uh, because of loss of conduction similarly if brocas is hap if, if there's a damage here in brocas and this is all fine right if this is all vernix is very good functioning but if such a person which has a defect here in area number, you know, this is 44, 45. 
So, if there is a defect in Broca's, this person knows what you are asking, he knows what he is reading, he knows what he is watching, he is trying to express what he knows. But unfortunately, he will not be able to speak out because of defect in Broca's and such a person will be hesitant to speak. Important is that a, such a person will be hesitant to speak because he knows when he is, because his comprehension is fine, his, all these centers are working fine. So, he knows what he is speaking, he knows what the question has been asked but and he also knows that he speaks which is incorrect, what he speaks out is not clearly audible. So, he is basically hesitant to speak person with Broca's defect will be having hesitance in speak and his, his voice will be distorted. Got it? So, that type of uh, you know is called expressive this you know aphasia. This is called expressive aphasia. Okay? I believe I have taught you in detail and if you have still have queries you can ask me so I can explain you better than I mean uh, in detail if you want you can put up your queries. Okay, so that's uh, done.